let's talk about the differences between acute leukemias and chronic leukemias. ALL, also called acute lymphoblastic leukemia, occurs mostly in childhood. The prognosis in childhood is excellent. There is also another peak of incidence that occurs in adulthood, but that's much less and the prognosis is much worse. AML occurs in adults mostly and the incidence increases with age. CML, which is chronic myelogenous leukemia, occurs mostly between 45 and 60 years of age. The incidence increases with age. CLL, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, occurs in the elderly. The complete blood count. The hemoglobin is low, usually in all the leukemias, but it could be normal as well. In ALL, the WBC count could be low, or it could be high and even up to 100,000. And the higher the WBC count, the worse the prognosis. Lymphoblasts are seen, and that's more than 20%. The platelets could be low or normal. In AML, the hemoglobin could be low, WBC could be low or high, and the median is about 15,000 per microliter. Myeloblasts are seen, which are more than 20%. Platelets are low or normal. The differences between lymphoblasts and myeloblasts is lymphoblasts have a high nuclear cytoplasmic ratio and there are no granules seen in the cytoplasm. There is a very scanty cytoplasm. It's TDT positive and PAS positive. Myeloblasts on the other hand do have some cytoplasm and in that you will see granules and you will see our rods. Myeloperoxidase is the positive test. In CML, the hemoglobin could be low or normal. The WBC count is typically between 100,000 and 250,000 per microliter. Myeloblasts are less than 10%. Platelet count is high usually at presentation. The cells of the myeloid lineage are seen to be increased in number. There would be more granulocytes, neutrophils, myelocytes, basophils, and eosophils. CLL would have a normal or a low hemoglobin. The WBC count would be between 15,000 and 100,000. Mature lymphocytes of single cell lineage are seen in proliferation. The risk factors for ALL are Down syndrome, radiation, and Epstein-Barr virus in early infancy. The risk factors for AML are Down syndrome, Fanconi's anemia, pesticides and insecticides, alkylating agents, radiation, and myelodysplastic syndrome. In CML, the risk factors are unclear, but radiation is supposed to play a role. Cigarette smoking increases the risk of blast crisis. In CLL, radiation may play a role. Lymphadenopathy. In ALL and CLL, lymphadenopathy is common and mostly the cervical followed by axillary and then inguinal nodes. It's seen in 70% of patients with CLL, but in AML and in CML, lymphadenopathy is rare. It could be present though. Splenomegaly is usually seen in AML and CML with a massive spleen in CML. CLL and ALL also can have splenomegaly, which is mild to moderate. The genetics. In ALL, a good prognosis is associated with the T1221 translocation, and a bad prognosis is associated with the Philadelphia chromosome or translocation 922. In AML, a good prognosis is in translocation 821 inversion of 16 and a bad prognosis is seen in translocation 1517. In CML, a good prognosis is associated with the Philadelphia chromosome. The translocated chromosomes form the BCR-ABL hybrid gene. A Philadelphia chromosome is necessary to diagnose CML. 
The treatment of ALL includes vincristine and dexamethasone along with anthracyclines. In AML, you give citarabin plus anthracycline followed by stem cell therapy. In CML, amartinib misalate and in CLL, rituximab and fludarabine. However, in asymptomatic old, very old patients, we tend to leave them alone and not give these medicines. Bone marrow transplant is indicated in acute lymphoblastic leukemia as well if the patient does not respond to the usual chemotherapy. It is not the first line therapy for CML because imatinib and similar drugs are given to obtain remission. If that doesn't work, second line medication is prescribed. And if that doesn't work, third line, and only then is bone marrow transplant considered, which is not indicated after the age of 70 years due to a high risk of mortality. 